Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to set up our molded beams, molded pipes, steel rods, and iron plates. And all of that's going to fit in this section here. So, let's get to it. Um, we are going to start off with our blueprints, of course. And we want to go to smelters, and we want to go to uh, foundries, molded beams, and pipes. But I want the version 2 blueprint here. Uh, whoops. Okay, let's try that again. Version 2. All right, now uh, we want to make sure this is facing forward. And we want to line it up there. And then uh, I'm going to actually, okay, I got to unlock that again for a minute. Okay, now let's move back this direction until that corner is on this seam. But then it needs to come forward because it needs to be lined up with this seam. And that means it needs to... Oh, of course! I needed one more nudge. You stupid son of a beech nut. Okay, let's eyeball this spot here. We'll unlock it. Okay, lock it again. Now we should be able to move it to there. Okay, so that corner's right on that seam. And we have one full foundation in front. I think that's correct. Let's lock it in place. All right, so these first four foundries here um, are... Uh, these four are all making steel beams. Three of them are making 45 beams per minute. The last one is overclocked, making 45.423. It probably isn't even worth it, but what the hell. I'm just following the the diagram, uh, which I'll show you in a second here. These four machines are all making molded pipes uh, at 50 per minute, and this one is actually underclocked to do only do 20 per minute. And if we take a look at our... Um, uh, satisfactory tools page. Hold on a sec. There we go. We can see that. Um, let's see. If we look at the the molded beams, see how it's four point zero zero nine <laughs> uh, foundries, and it's. Cre uh, or producing this many beams for uh, for the factory. And that number, if we go to items, and we find steel beams is 180.423. Whilst we're on this page, notice that we're also producing 170 steel pipes. Okay, so... Um, we had three at 50, that's 150, and one at 20, so that's 170. For the steel beams, 184.23 is our number. All right, so if we, uh, let's see, we look at this. So we have 45 times three. Uh, 45 times three plus 45.423 45.423 that comes out to 184.423 okay so exactly the same as it showed on satisfactory tools and again i could probably not overclock that and skip that and it would make almost no difference in the world but we'll do it we'll do it because we can it does cost us a power shard but it's not like we're short on power shards okay so that gets um the molded pipe and molded beam machines in place now we're going to come over here and we're going to grab this blueprint underneath constructors and we want the constructors iron plate a blueprint and that's just going to, in fact, let's just go into blueprint mode and then it should. Uh, what in the hell is going on? 
Okay, never mind. We won't go into blueprint mode. Let's do it the the manual way. That should be correct. We have a little bit of weird stuff going on here, but Oh man, that hose is actually Never noticed that clipping into there. Is it on this side too? Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I could remove that other upright if they if they match, but they don't. All right, I I'm not going to do anything about that right now. I might think about it and do something about it later if. My OCD keeps me up at night on it, but right now, I'm not going to go there. We're just <laughs> we're going to leave it the way it is. Uh, okay. So now what we need to do is we need to get the B version of this blueprint in behind here. So that's going to be this guy. And uh, let's bring it to there. And then to there. That should be correct. Okay, good. And these are just nine constructors using the default iron plate recipe, making 20 iron per minute uh, for a total of uh, 180 iron plate. And if we go back over and look at our sheet here, we need 180 iron plate. And those will be fed. Um, what are those feeding? Steel rod. They're feeding something. Caterium. Let's see, iron, oh, here we go, iron plate. Those appear to be, yeah, those appear to be feeding the bolted iron plate assemblers that we'll set up later. Okay. All right. And that's it. Uh, well, no, that isn't it. Actually, we have one more machine to set up. Uh, this one is very simple, almost wasn't even really worth putting in a blueprint, but I did it anyways. And that's going to be the alternate steel rod blueprint. And we're just going to put that, let me get over here. Should just butt right up against there. Yeah. Okay. And I'm actually not going to do this. We're going to go under the floor with this because I changed it. That's why I have the version 2 of the other one, but I didn't uh, change the blueprint on this, but I'm not worried about it. Okay, so this one's basically taking in 12 and a half steel ingots and it's producing a total of 48. Um, no, sorry, a total of 50 iron rods, so it's slightly overclocked to achieve that uh, because those are going to be for... Uh, steel rod recipe. Yeah, those are going to be for our rotor assembler. And it needs 50 per minute. Okay. So that takes care of our machines. That was easy. That was the easy part. So, now the logistics. Let's start with the steel ingots first. So we're going to come back over here and we're going to pop in floor holes in front of all of these guys. Okay. And of course we want to do the same thing um, for these steel uh, these guys over here. 
Make sure I got that at the right distance this time. Yep, okay. Um, all right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all of these uh, temporarily. And as we've done before, we want to change this to ver uh, vertical and go to one meter, and go down four, create our temporary platform, um, and then go back to zoom or zoop rather, and zoopity doop down that way. Very good. Okay, let's take a lift and just bring that down to here. Stick that in place. And then I do have, in the, our logistics section, I have, uh, see, these are going to be mergers. Yes, okay, so we need the four merger foundry right flow mark three. Yeah, that's the way we want. Okay, so make sure it's turning this way. And then we just want to line it up so that you're there and out to there. And then we just go along and hook in the lifts and listen for the tink. Oh, we gotta put more in. Also, we're gonna extend these um, out to there we'll be doing more work out that way. Okay, so here, let's let's actually get back up here. Now, for this, we should be able to go merger fan. Yeah, okay, so let's get this, make sure it's going that way. And then if we... put it right there, and then go... One, two, three, four, five, six. That should position it correctly. And it looks like it indeed does do that. So let's just lock those in place. Listen for the tink. Beautiful. All right, that's all hooked up. <clears throat> now, of course, we need to do the same thing on the... Uh, down here for these other steel foundries, these guys here. So let's remove all of you and uh, change this to vertical one meter, go down four, change this to zoop. And then we'll get our first lift to align to. And let's get right about here. Grab our merger array, turn it around this way. Uh... Oh, actually, you know what? Hold on. I want to actually key off of this one. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so we'll bring this over to here and then out to here. That should be correct. Listen for the tink. And then for you, we just we can just run you straight into there. You don't even need to have a a merger. Okay, and then this last piece here, uh, we don't actually need. Excellent. Excellent. Alright, now let's check our flow here. So each of you guys are producing 99 ingots. 
Uh, oh. Wait a minute. Why is that one a 100? Wait a second. Okay. Let me look at this. Am I looking at the wrong thing? Probably. Yeah, 99... Where the hell is that one a hundred? I don't know. Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Every all of these should be ninety-nine. That one's a hundred too. Did we just have like a a weird rounding thing going on? Fifty-five point three, fifty-five. Yeah, we must, because this is fifty-five point three. And it says 53.302 per minute. This says 55.302 per... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm being stupid. <laughs> I'm looking at what's in the buffer, not... Oh, I can't take me anywhere, you guys. Can't take me anywhere. Uh, just for that, I need a drink. <sighs> okay, let's try this again. <laughs> uh, so each one of these is producing about... 50, we'll just say 53 five ingots per minute right so all of this can stay mark three for sure and but over here since we have eight of these <clears throat> eight times 55 is 440 it's a little bit more than that but we can use 440 okay so that means that when we get down to here This has to be a Mark IV. Um, so 440 minus 55 is going to be 385. So that means this one also needs to be a Mark IV. But then 385 minus 55 is... Uh, oh, yeah. So that's still... Let's see, 385 minus 55 would be 330. So that needs to be Mark IV. Am I doing this right? Okay, hold on. Let's let's do this differently. My brain's not working today, obviously. So between these two, we have about 110. Now we have about 220. Now we have about 330. Um... Then we have, if we just add this one, that, that would be 355. Okay, so 210, uh, no, sorry, 110, 220, plus this one is 275. So, yeah, that, I, I think I did do that right. Because up once this is added to the mix, we're at 275, which is five more than a Mark III can handle. So I did do it correctly. Okay. I don't know why my brain was thinking I wasn't, but me and math, you know. You know how terrible I am at math. Which can make playing this game interesting sometimes. <laughs> but we should be good here, right? Because we're, we're only... 220 max and change, uh, which is way below 270. So we're okay to keep this one Mark III. Now that we have that figured out, uh, what we're going to do now is here, let's cut a hole in the floor here. And uh, let's just drop down here and nope, try that again. Give ourselves a platform here to work with. Um, however, starting here, one, two, three, four, we're going to want this platform to be going in that orientation. What we want to do now here is we want to grab 
a lift and we want to bring it down to here. And I want to put a straight in there. Okay, now we should be able to go into our blueprints and grab the four splitter. Uh, yeah, this one here. Make sure it's facing that direction and then line it up on this. Should be correct. Okay, let's do the same thing over here now. And I think I want that one facing inward. Or splitter boundary right. Look at that lined up first time. Okay, let's cut away the ceiling pieces here. And we'll reset all these lifts or just set them. Listen for the tink. We actually don't need this last one. We can just run that into there. Um, and actually, if we're going to do that, it'll look better if we redo this so we don't, the accordion's not sticking so far out on the lift. All right, good. Now, on our input for these guys, we're bringing in um, 120 steel ingots per minute. Those damn steel beams are, um, oops, are greedy bastards, man. Okay, so th we have a total of four of them, and this one is the one that's just barely overclocked, but I think we can just say that they're all 120, right? So that means these two are uh, 240, and then so we have 480, just a little more than 480. So this needs to be... A mark four and then if we subtract 120 from 480 that gives us three uh, 60 what should be fine uh, no 360 yeah no nope, we still got to do this then and then 360 wait a second oh, I'm okay I'm, 120 minus, uh, or no, sorry. 120, 240, 480. Okay, 480 minus 120 is 360. So that's what's going to be on this line is 360. 360 minus 120 is 240. So this can stay a mark three. Okay, pretty sure I did that right. Okay, let's just leave that open for now. And we'll cut these away temporarily. This has to be redone. Listen for the tink. Okay, those are all hooked up. Beautiful. Now for the fun part. That was easy. <laughs> uh, working with these damn angles, that's the fun part. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a merger here uh, with the output going to you. And that needs to be a Mark IV belt going into there. Okay. Uh, and then we need to run a mark for 
from here over to there, and then we get to play with these angles. So what I'm gonna, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start here. Or let me put another platform out there so I don't step off the edge and fall a mile down the waterfall. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to bring this. See, that's not perfectly straight. I think, uh, I don't think that's perfectly straight either, but I'm not sure if we'd be, we'll be able to get it perfectly straight. Let's, let's put that there for the moment. Can I move you a half a nudge that way? That's about as straight as I'm going to be able to get that. It's still not perfectly straight if you're, if you, I, well, it's pretty damn close. I mean, it's not going to be noticeable, put it that way. It's that close. But now things are not probably going to behave for us here. Let's just see what it does if we just run that straight into there. Yeah, so we've got a that little bit of a bend thing. I think what we'll try here is let's put this in here and just bring it out one thing and then do this. It's mm, so not perfect, but okay. Let's try. Uh, whoops. Let's try something else. If I put you here and half nudge, okay. Now let's try. I think that's about as close as we're going to be able to get it, ladies and gentlemen. It's still not perfectly straight, but it's so close that, you know, I just happen to know that if I tried to put this in and nudge it a half nudge to the right, it's we're going to have the opposite problem. It's going to be a little too, you know, it's going to be more concave instead of convex. So we're probably, I think we're going to have to live with that. Um, Hopefully it's not too noticeable from down below. Okay. Now, let's bring um, this line all the way out to here. Actually, hold on. No, before we do that... Let me check something here. You guys are not taking as much steel in as the other dude is. Yeah, you're only taking in 50 per minute. We have a total of four, and one of them's even underclocked a little bit, so just a smidge less than 200 in total. So, yeah, we're fine. But here's the thing. Um, some of the steel coming off of these machines over here has got to go to the beam machines. So we're overfeeding these, and then the overflow needs to come back and join up with these guys because we're not sending enough steel to these guys from that front row of machines. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to bring you around. Oh, wait a second. Ah, right. Okay, I need to put a splitter here. And then, so this will split off and, and feed this merger to bring the extra steel back over there. Okay, so let's bring this over to here. And I'm just going to bring it... ...that far for the moment. Because we have to intersect it with, with this one down here. Okay, so uh, oh, damn it! That's not what I wanted to do. 
Okay, come down here and then just go to here for a minute. Now, what does that look like? Again, it's just a little bit wonky. Um, I don't know if I can reach this further. Uh, oh yeah, that's gonna that's gonna give us trouble too, isn't it? Can okay? Can I do this? Bring you to there. It's not exactly straight, is it? But actually, I don't think I don't think this is straight anyway. So I think we do want it over to the left a little bit. All right, let's lock that in place there. I mentioned this to you guys last in the last episode. I think um, if you ever decide you want to build. A factory with with angles like this just be prepared for pain in the ass and logistics <laughs> I mean if you like things to be as neatly as possible right if you don't give a shit about neatness then it doesn't matter but I would imagine if you're going to all the trouble to make a nice diagonal factory you probably do care about neatness so just be prepared for that because it's one thing I didn't really consider when I first built this you know just didn't think about it it's certainly not insurmountable either. It's just makes things a little more complicated. Okay, we still don't have a good bend there. Can I bring you out this way some more? Actually, here, let's not even put that one in place yet. I th think that'll work. Yeah, I think that's good. As far as I can tell, anyways. Probably about as good as we're going to be able to get it, even if it isn't perfect. Okay, so this will feed the steel ingots from the other... Um, four machines there, which is just, like I said, 220-ish and, and change. Because these guys only need just a hair under 200. So that extra 20-ish will basically just overflow out the splitter and join up with this lane to give this... Uh, production chain, the steel beams, all of the steel that it needs. All right, let's look at this again for a minute. Just to confirm that. So, uh, if we look at the... Yeah, see, the molded steel pipe is only taking in 170, but we you know, on that line we're sending down, we're feeding 220-ish. So the extra will just overflow to the molded beams because the molded beams need 481 in total. And I'm pretty sure we were only feeding it 440-something, which would be pretty close to, to the extra that that needed. Another way of looking at it is that if we go to items, um, we're, we're providing a total of 663.628 steel ingots in total. Okay, so then if we go back to here, And we go 663 point, I think it was 28. Is that what that said? Steel ingots. 628 
Okay. And then if we subtract 174, um, wait. Okay, so if we subtract 170 for the pipes, and then we subtract 481.128, 481.128 for the beams, that leaves us with 12 and a half ingots, which is exactly what the steel rods need. Well, actually they need 12.57, but it's damn close enough. Okay, so that's how that math works out. I think we're finished hooking up our steel ingots. Let's do our iron next. So let's see here. I'm going to put a couple more of those in. Before we actually run the line over to the iron, let's get the splitters and all that set up over here. Okay, so let's do the same thing where we temporarily cut away the floors here. And we want to run you down to there. And then we'll do the same thing on these other guy, uh, other ones. Um, I think I want you to go this way. Let's extend this floor out a little bit further. You know what? Let's just have them all face towards the back. That should work. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to put in the splitter array again. So that's going to be, it says this is for foundries, but I think it'll line up. Splitter, yeah. I think it'll line up uh, for these as well. We'll just have to shave off the end. Oh, it doesn't. Hmm. All right, I guess that's not gonna work. So that being the case, let's get rid of the belts, because these are constructors. I thought I had checked that, but apparently I didn't check it closely enough, right? So we should be able to take a splitter and just line it up visually like this. Don't need that one at all. So I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing um, uh, for all of these two. And I might uh, Yeah, let's cut this floor away. Is 
since we're kind of doing this manually, I don't know if it's worth the hassle to... But it's going that way, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's worth the hassle to put the... the blueprint in at this point. We'll just eyeball them. All right, now what we have to do is something kind of similar to what we did before, where we need to take a splitter with the input uh, input on this side. This input now has to go on this side. And that should hook all of those guys up. Okay, now we have a pretty damn long run to get over here with the iron. And I'm going to actually need to change uh, the machines up top. Because I originally had it in my mind that I was going to run those up above. And then I changed my mind. So let's run these down here. Let's go over to here. Okay, yeah, so all of these, uh, these four iron foundries, iron, uh, they're making the al uh, alternate iron alloy ingot, are for the iron plates. They're dedicated to that because they're not hooked up to the manifold for the, for the other iron ingots which are feeding the steel. Um, and I originally thought I was going to run that up to the ceiling, and then uh, that has now changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut all of this away, and we're going to run it through the floor instead. Okay. Let's, whoops. Okay. So get out all of that cleaned up. I think so. Let's put some, um, whoops, uh, floor holes down here. I think that's too far out. Yeah, okay. All right, let's cut all of this away. that one down as a guide let's grab our this is a merger now so we want our four merger and we want to flip it this way and that should be perfect listen for the tink I like the sound of the tink Okay, so that should connect all of the iron <coughs> uh, from these foundries here. Now what we want to do is, um, let's see, what's our quantity here? Are we over 270? I don't remember. You're producing 75 per minute. We've got three at 75. So that's 225. 
and then you uh, are underclocked to 45. Okay, so 225 plus 45 is 270 exactly. Yeah, okay. Well, we can stay with Mark III then. 270 exactly. Uh, let me double check that over here. For the iron plates. Yep, we need 270 iron ingots exactly. So we're good. So we're going to route this around and through here and then back around here. And the reason I'm doing that <coughs> is because, and I mentioned this in the last episode, I'm trying to keep all of the logistics only one um, splitter <laughs> down. I don't want to go any lower than that because then we may have clearance problems uh, here in the basement. Because remember, we're going to be putting... Uh, truck loading stations down here and trucks are going to be running through here to haul stuff in, uh, away from here and so we want you know we want maximum clearance down here so I don't I don't want to go more than just one splitters height down from the ceiling let's run this to here um, yeah we'll run it right to this intersection here And then we'll come this way. And let's run it to... Maybe bring it back to there. Except for I didn't have that straight. I think it needs to go to... That looks that looks good. Okay. <clears throat> Let's put that in place. Okay, so now we're gonna run this to here. Oh shit. Who put that hole there? That's a little bit crooked, isn't it? All right, let's... Oh, now it's straightened out. That was weird. When I locked it in place, it made it... It made the hanger crooked. Yeah, I'm just kind of double checking here, make sure this is all nice and straight 90 degrees. Is it? <laughs> I can't tell. Yeah, I think it is. Because if I look down this seam here, it's right down the center of the belt. So I think we're good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is... We're gonna run you down to here. It's the same old story, right? We gotta figure out the best way to intersect these. Um, so why don't we take it to there for starters? And that's that's not straight. Of course it isn't. That's straight, I think. Yeah, I believe it is. Okay. Now, what would happen if we just simply ran this to here? What's it going to look like? That could work okay if we pull that one back a bit. Um, I'm just guessing, but let's go back. Let's go back to this seam here. Yeah. 
and before we hook up the other end, let's just run it. I think we need to come a half a nudge back this way. Like that. Yeah, I think that's straight. Put it this way, it's as straight as it's going to get. And then if we run that into there, we're looking good. Yeah, okay. I think we got that. And I'm just going to make sure the iron's going to flow... Uh, underneath here. Okay, so it's getting across to there. It's already... Okay, it's getting across. Okay, yep, it's working because I see it uh, also over there too. I think we're good. The last connection that we need to make is the concrete. Oh! No, we got... That's right, we got to hook this up too. Oh, shit. Um... Forgot all about that. Okay, let's let's put this lift in here. Oh come on, game, really? <laughs> Nothing's ever easy. Son of a bitch. Um. All right. So we could actually. We can move this over. The reason I had it have it so far back is because I originally thought I was going to be, you know, running a bunch of shit from the ceiling. How? Well, wait a minute though. We do need to consider something here. Here, let's put this back in place. Let's grab a splitter and turn it this way. You know what? I gotta hook all of these up anyway, so let's just do it right now. Um, well, I don't want to completely put this floor back together in case we run into a problem. But we should be able to. Will this? Uh, we want to come that way. Will this give us a lineup? Yes, it does. Okay, that makes that easy. Right? Yeah, okay. All right, you guys are taking in 30 concrete per minute per machine, so we should be fine for Mark Three all the way down on this. And you know what? We actually don't even need you. We'll just do this. Voila! Okay, so that hooks up the concrete. Uh, which, again, we had to do anyways. But I wanted this in place so I could see kind of how far over we can move the this constructor without getting too damn close. So, I think what we can do... Let's see, this is lined up. This little doodad here is even with the seam. Okay, so, well, ha here, we can leave this floor hole in place as a temporary gauge there. Let me go down here and look again. Uh, where are we at? Oh, I hmm, I removed the lift. But I, I think we are fine if we just go one nudge over. 
Yeah, we should be fine if we just go one nudge, uh, nudge over to the left. Let's take that away. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to copy this. And by the way, this is what this is set to. It's just slightly overclocked uh, to provide 50 per minute, 48 per minute, the normal, you know, the normal clock speed. Uh, and it's using the alternate steel rod recipe. So I was able, you know, by using that recipe, get all of our rod needs with one single constructor rather than the default recipe, which would have taken three or four probably. Uh, all right, let's go to production and grab a constructor. And we just want to move it over one that way. And that's lined up correctly. We'll paste this so it's back to the overclocked. And I like to color my overclocked machines red just so I can tell at a glance that they are overclocked. Not necessary, just something I like to do. And we're, we're cozy, but we're good. I'd rather be cozy down here than cozy up here. Even though we could even, well, we could move it over one more. No harm, no foul. And it is going to be visible from underneath. So yeah, why don't we do that? Okay, that needs to go there. You know, this little arm thing, you know, those things just irritate the hell out of me in this game. Because they stick out too damn far and it makes it a pain in the ass to set things down without clipping. I wish they would have changed that. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. It's going to look a little nicer down below now. That's too close. Okay. Mui a better. And then all we really have to do for this then is just run out of here to there. And, you know, it's all manifold and everything, so it'll even itself out when it's all said and done. Good. Now let's do the concrete. So we're going to take a Mark III lift and we're just going to pop that up into the ceiling for now. Uh, we're not too terribly worried about its exact placement up above. I just need to see where it's going to be up above, right? Um, okay, so we're going to need to put these flooring pieces back in. Oh, that's right. I already got this one set up because I was able to put it into the blueprint. Do note, though, that this is a Mark IV lift. So once again, we'll run it up through the ceiling and put the pipe or the floor hole in place. Good. All right, now let's go over here. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do this, this concrete, you know, the outputs on this concrete when I originally built this. I, I had thought about just running all the lifts all the way up into the floor, but I got to thinking that might look kind of weird. So I think we're just going to run one Mark IV lift up rather than run a lift up for every single machine. So to accomplish that, what we're going to do is we're going to... Okay, yeah, let's put... Let's put a lift in place, a couple lifts in place there. I have a merger, three high merger, that I think the spacing is correct on, but it's a little bit persnickety to get it to go in there the way it needs to go in there. And I can't, I can't quite get it. Oh, okay, hold on. That's I think that's what I want. 
Oh yeah, that is what I want. Um, that was actually easier than the first time I tried this. I would like to, however, move it over one because we don't need a splitter on the end piece. Let's try that again. Uh, this is the three high merger. Right, okay, and make sure that the arrow is this way. We can actually work with that. Because we just have to slide it out to here. That should be correct. Okay, good. Now we'll have to redo these lifts, of course. Listen for the tink. And then this can just run into there. And then we have, um, I think this last one we're just going to build off the floor because it's not worth fighting with the blueprint to try and get it lined up. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Visibility is a little bit weird. Um... Yeah, I think we're going to go out to the left here. Because we have to go out the left on the back side. And so I want them to be consistent. And you'll see why. All right. Okay. All right, let's check our flow rates here. So each of these machines on the front row are producing 50 concrete per minute. So <clears throat> that means on the uh, when we get to this after this machine, we're at 250. So we can keep this can all stay Mark three, but the lift that we send upstairs needs to be a Mark four. And um, we're going to have to do some trickery to get that floor hole in. So we'll do that when we go up above. But why do we not have concrete going up the lift? It's because I've got the output wrong on the merger. That's why. Okay. We'll have to reset the lift now. And we want it pointing that to, yeah, pointing that direction. Uh, what? What the hell's going on here? Let me reset this belt. Let me reset this lift. Oh, it was there. I just couldn't... Ah, silly me. It was on there. I just wasn't seeing it. Oh, you know what? I'll bet it was that, that invisible thing that sometimes... You, You'd think they would have fixed that <laughs> with 1.0, but whatever. Um, it was the invisible thing. I think. I don't know. I, all I know is that all of a sudden I could see it there when I couldn't before. So you guys look back in the video. You That way, that's my proof. So that way you guys don't think I'm going crazy. All right. This side's going to be a pain in the ass. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So what we're going to do over here is... 
let's uh, let's put this lift in place. All right, I'm just gonna. One, okay, one thing we could do here. When I did when I did this on my test save, I, I reversed them and put the mergers behind, but then they were bumping up against, you know, this little cage thing. What we could instead do is just raise them up higher. The only thing about that is then it won't be It won't be consistent with the front machines, but I mean, if I'm going to turn them around backwards, they're, they're not going to be consistent from that standpoint either. So I think that's what we'll do. I think that's what we'll do. So I guess the next question then that I need to ask myself is self, is it going to be worth it to try and fuck around with a blueprint or should we just manually put all the mergers in place? It's, you know, the problem, of course, again, is we just got all this machinery in the way. It might be worth it to try a blueprint. Uh, you guys are still... Oh, I should be feeding this into a sink. I'll worry about that later. Do I have room to put the designer down out here somewhere? Not really. Well, just fucking around trying to do that's not, not going to be worth the hassle. So screw it. I'm just going to build these manually. But what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go five high. Yeah, what a, this is going to be a pain in the ass. Okay, so go one, two, up like that. Okay, now we need to get a merger. Uh, with the output that way. And then over to here, like that. Can't. Visibility sucks, man. It's really hard to see what I'm doing here. Yeah, let's put a filter on. No, we don't want to take the one, that one, just this one. Would it be worth my while to put a temporary floor in to do this? If we go vertical, and come, uh, come up to, yeah, to there, okay, and then what we'll do is Back like that. That should work. We'll see why not. I am very, very thankful that they added these guidelines into the game. This way, uh, yeah, two that way. Um, all right, I think that's correct. Listen for the tink. 
Huzzah! I like how it remembers the positioning after you set the first one. Really useful. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so we have the same scenario here, except for that this one is overclocked by another 14 and change, I believe. Let's get rid of all of that. Yeah, so this is 64.75, so it's 14.75 higher than the other ones. <clears throat> but I think, I don't think that'll change our product flow. And also, we don't actually need this here. One, two. <clears throat> but what we have to do is, you know, these are all doing again 50 per minute. Right? 50 per minute. So. That means once again, when we get to this machine here, we're at 250, except for that we're actually at 264 and change, which is still under 270. So yeah, we're fine. We're fine to keep this Mark III all the way down. But once again, when we get to this machine, we need Mark IV. Should be able to put that floor hole in from here. Okay, good. You know, the other the other thing that's really good about me... Oh, fuck. I just now noticed that was... <laughs> oh, shit. I should have gone up a little higher, huh? All right, I, I will fix that off camera. I, I definitely will. Uh, I'm not going to do it right now. But I'll fix that off camera so it's a little higher so it's not doing that. I just now noticed that. Anyway, the other thing I was saying is when I had these turned the other way, going inward, it was conflicting and clipping into this rack here. So now we don't have that problem. So that's good. Ah, uh, shit. I wonder if I can... I might be able to do this actually easily by just going up like this. Right? Why not? Said I wasn't gonna do this off camera, but if we can do it quickly with a you know an easy solution. Okay, so that means all of these. Oh, hold on, I gotta be careful. Just that one. Um. Okay, and then let's get rid of that, that, that. Okay, now we want to put this lift in here, but I think we want to go up one, two, three, four. Is that right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, this is this was an easy fix, so I might as well just do it right now. There we go. That wasn't so bad. And then we already have our floor hole in place. All right. Almost done, guys. Almost done. Um, let's go up here. And we're going to have to rerun these. 
So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to cut those two out. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. To get that floor hole the way we want it. And then let's rerun this lift like that. Alright, and then you, I'm just going to rerun like that. Okay. Uh, I think... I think that's supposed to go there. Yeah, I believe it is. Okay, good. Um, Alright, now what we're going to do is... We're going to... We're going to put a merger here. Uh, but we have to actually start it back here because of the angled tiles. And then just nudge it out to there. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to have to reset this one again. Okay, so this is all Mark IV. That's looking good. Actually, here, I want to check something. Let's just bring you... We're going to have to play the line lineup game again here. I'm not super worried about up here, though, just because... Um, We may end up redoing some of this anyways once we start working on the next floor and, you know, doing the logistics down here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that product was actually flowing through there. Now, we're going to do the same thing over here, except we're going to use a splitter this time. Put the input there. And we need to come back this way. There we go. Mark four lift. And let's, while we're at it, redo this one, too. Um, let me get the north and east on my compass in about the identical spots, and then... Well, no, that's not going to help us a lot either just because our angle there is not necessarily a perfect 45. Okay, so what would you do in straight mode? You know what? I'm just going to leave it that way. Because here again, there's a high probability that this is going to change. It's a little crooked, though, isn't it? Um, if we brought you over to here, whoops. I mean, it's possible that this will stay this way permanently, so that's why I want to—I don't want to do a, a shoddy job either. I'm just not concerned about getting real specific with it at this point. Uh, no, we don't want to be in straight mode for this connection. This one, we do want to be in straight mode. Okay, so at least that's correct there. 
Oh, <laughs> no, it's not. Uh. Okay, so same, excuse me, same thing. If we just move this one back this way. And let's, uh, okay, hold on. Hit the right thing. Let's not do straight mode. I think we got it. Okay. Or close enough, anyway. All right, now, I realize that we're way overfeeding, right? We, we, we have about 614 concrete coming through here in total, and this can only handle up to 480. But that's not... I'm not worried about that right now because we're not done, right? S some of this concrete is also going to be sent even further up to make industrial... encased industrial beams. So for the for the moment it's it's over, but it won't be when we're finished with the build, right? So in case you were concerned about that, you do not need to be because we got it covered. Last thing we need to do here is make um uh, or hook up power, and then see if it's all working. Oh, I guess I... At some point, I might want to consider, you know, stair, maybe stair access between the floors. Because I've got, you know, I've got hyper tube access. But, uh, you know, from the ground all the way up, but not between the floors themselves. And, of course, you have to turn my light off. Okay, so let's see. We have power up here. Uh, you are one notch over from the seam. Right, let's just put you right there. Okay, and then what we want to do is come this way and line you up. To there. Um, okay, we're going to have to do these shenanigans. We'll have, well, yeah. Let's link those two up. And let's also go to I'm having trouble seeing here. Okay. If we go to here, that should work. Let's do the same thing over here just for some redundancy. Let's see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, is that straight though? Not quite.
Okay, if... Oh, I'm stuck. If I was going to do this... What I would prefer to do is run this to here. And then just have a little... Yeah, see, that didn't actually hook up. It seemed like it was a little bit weird. And then we'll just have... that connection go to there. Okay, that should be good enough. Moment of truth. Here we go. All the machines are lit up. All of them appear to be animated. Why are these ones yellow? Are they... Okay, yeah, all of these in front are yellow, so something's not jiving with those guys. Everybody in back here is green, though. I think you're just waiting. Yeah, okay, you're green. You're just waiting for more material. All of our constructors are good. Uh, oh, we didn't get power to our steel rod machine. Um, I think to do that, what we'll do is we'll just put a... Put you there, and then... do that. Oh, did I forget to reset the recipe on this? I did. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Well, that's okay. We can figure it out. Um, alternate steel rod. You're supposed to be producing 50 per minute. There we go. Okay. So it looks like we only have one issue, and that's this front row of foundries are not getting something. What is it? What is it they're not getting? They're not getting their concrete. It's probably because I just need to reset. Well, no, the lift is there. That one's getting concrete. Okay. Uh, let's just reset all these lifts. That means my blueprint probably is wonk. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I just need to reload that blueprint and reset those. Now we have green lights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're working. Whether, you know, the machines are 100% efficient, I don't know about that, but can't really tell that until we have the entire factory set up anyway. Right now, I just want to make sure that all, you know, everything's flowing, right? That all the feeds are working. And if they are, then that's good enough for me at this point. We won't be able to tell, you know, the the total outcome until the entire factory is built and all of the machines are hooked up. But I'm going to call this success. So I'm going to go along, of course, and fix the floor back up, get everything back in place. And that concludes our the first floor of our steel factory. Uh, what is coming up is, let's take a look at our our thingy again. Um, okay, so we are going to slide everything over to the left that we're 
done with. So we're done with, yeah, we, we're done with Caterium wire. We're done with steel rods. We're done with molded steel pipe and molded beams. So we've got, uh, okay, so we're going to have about seven uh, steel, steel screw constructors that we're going to have to do. That's a, that's a, an end product there. We're going to have three assemblers for stators. Uh, we have the end product for steel beams. And then we need to encased industrial beams next. Okay, so these three machines and then uh, assemblers making bolted iron plates, assemblers making rotors. Oh, that's okay. That's bolted frame. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure how many of these machines we're going to do in the next episode. It just kind of depends upon how, you know, how the, the blueprints and the positioning and all that comes together. But, you know, that that's where we are. So we're, we're maybe halfway through this, this build, maybe ish. <laughs> So, anyway, yeah. Get that switch back over. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. And uh, once again, I will work on getting the next part of it put together. And expect to, you know, have another episode uh, next week. Uh, right now, and I've explained this the last few times, but right now... Uh, it's just working out for me uh, to do one episode a week. It, it won't necessarily always be that way, but it just is that way right now. So hopefully that's okay with everybody. Um, it's just the way it is, right? So with that being said, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video. And I'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.